Hey everyone, so in this video we are going to look at how to create custom blocks and then add those blocks back to the UI here in Asset Forge. Reason for this is because Asset Forge is really predicated upon the blocks that are available to you. So if you can add more blocks, you can have more situations that this tool will be able to help you in. For instance, if we change the selector to fences, not a lot of selection, like they have some wooden fences, but they don't have like a wrought iron fence. So, you know, like those black metal fences with the like little points on the top of the poles. What we're going to do, we're going to make one of those and then we're going to add it to the UI so that you can use it in further projects. Now, what's going to happen, we're going to create a folder. That folder will show up at the very bottom and that's where you'll save the models that you create. So what you want to do Go to wherever you have Asset Forge installed, wherever you have it saved, and then you're going to want this folder called Collections. You're just going to want to open that up and you want to create your folder here. So you're going to right click, you're going to do New, you're going to do Folder, and we'll call it, say, Custom. So Custom Models. The key is that you need to save the final 3D model into that folder. Now it won't show up here yet. You need to restart Asset Forge, but we'll do that before we're done. So we're going to make the wrought iron fence. So let's go to primitives. And we're going to use two shapes. We're going to, actually three, sorry. We're going to use the cylinder. So that will be the vertical pole. We'll use a cone, that will be the point on the top, and then we'll use a block. We'll actually scale this down vertically and depth, that way it's wide, and that will be like the crossbars. Okay, so we got some scaling to do. And you just use the six dots to scale. And if you're not certain if it's still round, you can certainly just change the camera view from above. Actually, I suppose we can just keep that view for the moment since we really care about the thickness. Okay, I think that's getting pretty close to what we want. Sorry about that, I had clicked on one of the tools when we were looking from above and it sunk it down under the grid. Okay, it's getting close. Yeah, I think that's just about good enough for this demonstration. So we'll take this and we'll center it. So for the moment, we'll put it at, if you click on this tool here, you can choose this position. We'll put it at zero, zero. So it's centered in that block. Now what we're going to do, we're going to come over to cone and now it needs to shrink down. So let's put it at zero, zero, zero. Then we are going to raise this up. We'll go grab the arrow, raise it up. And now we're just going to start shrinking these. This one needs to be shrunk vertically, unlike the pole. Let's see how that looks. Okay, let's put that at zero, zero, zero down. Okay, so what we're going to do now, 
we need this to be positioned in such a way that when it's tiled to the left and to the right, like you would use this in, uh, because all I did is to create a tileable block, a block that could be repeated sequentially, you want to make sure that the poles are always the same amount of space apart because you don't want it to be obvious that it's a tile. So what you need to do, we're going to take these two, we're going to move them over. And then we're going to put the pole at 0.25. And I'll explain the math in a second. It's actually very, very simple. And we'll put the cone at 0.25. And now we'll duplicate them both and shift this over. And now they will be at negative. 0.25. And here comes the very simple math. When you tile this, since this is 0.25 and this is negative 0.25, that means the difference is 0.5. So we also have 0.25 difference from here to the side. Okay. So that means when this is lined up with the next pole because this whole thing will be copied over and copied over to the side when you're using this in, in your models. That means we need the difference from here to here to also be 0.25. So you'll see in just a second how that happens. I don't think I explained that very well. It'll be easier once we have the extra model. So what we're going to do, I'm just scaling this down to size is a lot easier. Okay, I think that's just about right. Maybe a little bit thick. Okay, so now, make sure that's at zero centered again. Actually, still a little bit too thick. Okay, I think that looks good. And now we'll just control D to duplicate. And then just put another one there. Okay, so this is going to be what the final tile looks like, although we'll add some coloring to it. So this is what I was talking about. So if we shift click to grab everything, we control D and we slide this over. See all the space here is a space here and space here. That's the whole point that you want to be able to set this up so it tiles without any kind of interruption. So people can't tell where the tile, where one tile ends and another one begins. And this is what I was talking about. So see how this is 0.25. So if you're traveling in this direction, X is going to be getting bigger. Well, this one is 0.75. This one is 1.25. So see what I mean? That going from one side to the other the instances of these objects need to be the same spacing. If they weren't the same spacing, then you would see like a gap. And it'd be obvious that, oh, okay, that's where it's being repeated. Now, it's not obvious because you've got consistent spacing. Now, how about this? Well, if we rotate, works as well. Okay, so now let's just click on the paintbrush icon, not paintbrush, but the paint roller. We'll go to material, we'll do new material, we'll click on this, and we'll just do black. And there's our wrought iron fence. The final step is you go to File, you go to Export Model, 
And when you choose export, this is where you need to export it to. You need to actually put it inside that folder that you created. I called mine custom. You need to call yours whatever you want. So I'm going to save it there. And then what will happen, we'll restart Asset Forge, and then you'll see that the new folder is there with the fence. Okay, and as you can see, our fence object was created. It also automatically creates a material file, so that needs to be there too. And I already restarted Asset Forge, so if we come to the selector up here and we go down to Custom, it's hard to see because it's black on black, but there is our fence. And now you can just tile this like any other object, as you can see. Lines up nice. You can rotate it as well. So you could control D and then use the rotate tool and then just line that up. There you go. And you can just keep going to make your fence around, whether it's around a yard or whatever. And now you've added a custom block that you can use in any of your projects in Asset Forge. And you can just build up this collection over time. And again, I think the key is to use the primitives. And you can actually create new primitives too. So if you find that you're gonna use something a lot, you can create a new primitive. Now, creating a new primitive is a little bit tough because you don't really have the tool sets where you can like taper and slice and things like that like you can in other 3D modelers. But what you could do, you could create the primitive in another 3D modeler and then import it here. So like you could use 3D Builder. I've had mixed results though. There seem to be some scaling issues. So I'm not sure if I would recommend that right at this moment, but you could indeed create a uh, the, the block in another modeler. And then like I said, import it. It'd be the same way you'd save it into a folder in the collections folder in the asset forge folder directory. And I think that should about do it. So if you have any questions, if there's any requests, just please put that in the comment section. I hope you found this helpful and uh, please enjoy the rest of your day.